Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Kepada saudara Muslim, the first thing that occurred to me was uh, Dr. Sikarno's explanation about the name. You're having a, a problem of consistency of the name. Okay, Lino in Aceh, Galo Galo in uh, uh, Sumatra, then even in Bali, is Kale Kale. We're getting confused. So we were in the same group, we were talking about the names. Yeah. So I just want to touch a little bit on the name. Uh, in Malaysia, we don't have a problem because in Malay, the Malay language, it is described as Kelulut, right? So uh, certain parts of Java use Kelancheng and Tuel, and some use Kelulut. Kalimantan use Kelulut, probably the influence from Sabah and Sarawak in Malaysia. Um, so that's just to explain the name of the establishment that I represent, yeah? Academy Kelulut Malaysia. All right. Uh, Okay, I'm going to talk about concoctions developed from correlations of Meliponi cultured honey with ethno entomology. Right? Also, we'll touch a bit on the business aspects uh, because the professor earlier, speakers earlier mentioned that this workshop will also uh, maybe correlate with some business opportunities. Oh, no wonder. No wonder Dr. Kaunu was having a problem. He keeps jumping. Okay. Okay, a little bit about Langkawi. Langkawi is a small island in the northeast of Peninsular Malaysia. Now, the unique part about Langkawi is that it is a melting pot of different cultures. Okay. Uh, it is. Okay. It's just beside Sumatra, so there is some influence from the Aceh people. It's also just beside Thailand, this is the Patani region. So there is a convergence of peoples. Are you going to do something about your point? <laughs> okay. There is a convergence of different cultures, uh, diversified culture. So you get uh, Aceh people mixed with uh, Thailand people and also the Malays there. And Langkawi historical, historically was formerly in the ancient kingdom of Langkasuka, which was under Thailand. Now, why am I talking about all these cultures? We want to talk about peace. Now, here what's happening is, all these cultures, they have their own traditions. Okay? The Aceh people have their own traditions, their own traditional medicines. Uh, Thai people, the Patanis have their own traditions, the Malays they have their own traditions, and it's coming together into Langkawi and all mixed up, right, into one melting pot. Okay? So that was what interested us to go and find out what kind of traditions being influenced from Indonesia, influenced from Thailand and Malaysia. So what we found out was that See, one press it jumps five times. <laughs> okay, why don't you do it for me? When I say it, okay, yeah, yeah. In Langkawi is a small island, so there were only two or three places uh, we visited. First one is uh, this one. Uh, what's interesting is that he has his meliponary by the way, a meliponary is where you do meliponic culture, as opposed to apiary, you do apiculture. So this is a meliponary, where he puts it in a coconut farm, and a specific cultivar, what we call the kelapa pandan. Okay, so lada kelapa, tapi kelapa pandan. It's a very fragrant kind of uh, coconut. Actually, he was trying, hoping that his honey will have the same fragrance as the coconut. <laughs> which it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way, okay? So the flowers do not have fragrance. Okay, next. Okay, this is another one, which is in the, the cultural center of Langkawi, which is run by uh, a government agency. And then, uh, they've encouraged some, you can see some traditional carvings 
Okay, that's the unique thing, right? Which we are also encouraging in Kalimantan, in Sumatra, you know, have your own identity, yeah? Oh, you got to go. Sorry. I, I better not use this. If I need a pointer. Okay. Okay, go next. All right. So this is basically uh, the most common species, which is uh, culture there, is uh, itama. And uh, well, in terms you can see the bee is black, so black is the uh, There's also another one there, uh, which is Tetrigona africanis. And this one is only in pockets where there's uh, resinous trees, pterocarps especially. Okay, so that's the next structure, and uh, the products that we can get from them. As Dr. Kahono was mentioning, it's not just honey, you also get propolis and you also get pollen. Right? Uh, this is the full attire we use when we are harvesting. It's not to protect ourselves, the bees don't sting, not to worry. It is to protect the bees from us. We want to get the purest honey, so you don't want to contaminate that honey. So you use the veil and the full attire, right, to protect the bees, right? So a lot of people are always mistaken. Why are you so afraid the bee cannot sting you and all that? No, it's not that. We're not afraid of the bees. It's because we love the bees, right? So we want to encourage all the regions to do that. Have full attire when you are harvesting, right? Uh, this is our the latest pump, of course, in the village, maybe you want to use a cheaper pump. But the problem is, you need something heavy duty. When you have 50 hives, 100 hives, you need, you can't use that uh, small pump and with the spinal disorders, waste problems, urinary tract, uh, and lethargic uh, conditions. That's me actually, the body that is quite lethargic. Yeah. <laughs> I should be having uh, effects on the body are very noticeable after taking, especially system of swelling. In other words, it has that anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, second one, popular one is the garlic, ginger, lemon, honey. Yeah? So everything is uh, chopped up and uh, supposedly uh, helps in cholesterol, congestive heart problems. Uh, Cucumber honey, uh, which is the, a direct translation, actually is the pepper elder thing, Peperomia pellucida, with fenugreek. Fenugreek blading is halpa. Mostly helpful for cough problems, sore joints, gout problems. Then toka ali, sweet honey, is in demand for the goal of manhood, erectile dysfunction ailments. Now this actually has been proven, there have been some papers on it, uh, that it helps in uh, impotency, erectile dysfunction. Garlic honey, it is good for prolonged fever problems in the body with less disease resistance. Next, please. Okay, the method. methods uh, for the sea cucumber, they clean it and then uh, uh, not evaporated, macerated into honey after two weeks, chopped and uh, Used for medicinal purposes. Garlic ginger, the three ingredients are cooked and then cooled and blended, uh, sort of infused into the honey. Uh, Peperomia, the whole plant is used. The shoots washed, cleaned, and then boiled with fenugreek, then mixed with honey. Tonka ali, um, it's finely sliced, or uh, sometimes they, they pulverize it after dehydration, they pulverize it. Uh, garlic honey is roasted or burned and soaked in honey. Next, please. Traditional and indigenous knowledge versus scientific analysis. This is where well, what we were talking about, you know. Um, a lot of it was early on hearsay. There have been papers presented, a little bit of experiments here and there. So what we intend to do, the aim of this collaborative research is a collaboration with the Malaysian Genome Institute uh, well, basically because they have the machines, you know. 
So uh, we're going to work with them. Uh, the novelty of the work lies in finding beneficial metabolites or compounds in the honey and the herb mixtures. Herb mixtures. The discovery will be correlated to the function of the compounds in the human body metabolism. Next, please. Okay, this is the group uh, in genome institute. Uh, they, are, they are very proud to boast that machine, NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance, which costs like some 8 million US dollars or something like that. So you can imagine, we have to work with them. I can't afford a machine like that. <laughs> so that way we get, um, um, we, we have their experts in, in uh, GCLS experts, BioXA experts, NMR experts, and uh, they will be providing the uh, necessary analysis and all that. Okay, next please. Research aim in this issue, we propose to profile the metabolized niche of the concoctions. This profile will include the sugar amino acids and organic acid contents, uh, identified through metabolomics approach using nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer and gas chromatography mass spectrometer. Earlier on, someone, one, one student was talking about yeah, some experiments that they were going to do on uh, how honey will help the athletes. Uh, she's working on that. I think that should be supported. Um, of course, I can't support that, but maybe the Indonesian government or some agencies should be looking into that. But that's the whole idea of us sharing this knowledge. Yeah. Um, we have different channels in Malaysia, so maybe in Indonesia, different formalities and different channels. Yeah. Uh, third, from this data, we will analyze, distinguish the active compounds that are beneficial in the macerated mixture. We will look into the antioxidant properties of the compounds identified. Cytotoxicity study using mammalian cell culture will also be carried out. The produced data will be expected to support the indigenous knowledge in traditional treatment by providing scientific evidence. So this is what the industry needs, scientific evidence, right? Next please. Okay, so the program objective will be to collect and process the herbs and all that. And because currently the herbs are being processed in a, how you say, a kampung way, you know, in, as opposed to a more laboratory uh, methods. Yeah. To determine the beneficial compounds by performing metabolomic NMR and CG, CG, GC, sorry, not CG, GCMS analysis, to correlate the function of the herb mixtures by conducting bioactivity assay, to provide scientific proof for local practices using herbs as medicinal treatment. Next please. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna finish this in four minutes. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> four different types of local herbs. Yeah, I think it's ten. Uh, honey mixtures are chosen. They are typically used for traditional treatment. So basically, these are preliminary data which can form a basis to conduct further clinical trials. Expected outputs, primary secondary metabolites when they identify using NMR, spectrometer, DCMS methods. Antioxidant properties expected to be present in these several mixtures. Um, practitioners will be able to use the findings and maybe put it on their label or their commercial products. Next. Okay, so these are the basic activities that we'll be doing. Next. Okay, so it's easier to see this way. This is the expected timeline. Okay, next. Potential contribution of the research, all right? Good health and well-being. Decent work and economic growth. Industry innovation and infrastructure. Next. Okay, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, then uh, uh, I'll pass it back to uh, but, um. Okay, thank you very much. Very good lecture. So I, I invite one or two questions. Are there any? Okay, please. Yes.
Uh, I would like to, to ask about the using of tongkat ali in food. You make sure with, uh, with honey in your research or not? Because in Indonesia now, there's a Perka Peraturan Kepala Badan POM number 7, 2018. It is one of material, raw material that wouldn't be added into food, processed food. What, what material is that? Uh, tongkat Ali. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we go here, Pasak Bumi. Okay, okay. Uh, that is probably something that... Uh, How about in Malaysia? In Malaysia, there is a restriction, but... Uh, the same as here, you have your... Debcast Department Kesehatan yeah. to... Over there, you have the Kementerian Kesehatan, right? And... Um, I'm not too sure about the, the, the criteria or the specifications uh, which is allowable and which is not. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the Malaysian Genomic Institute is a government agency which will do the study and the um, sukatan sukatan, the doses that is allowable. Yeah? Okay. So I'm not too familiar with that because my part is the beekeeping and the honey production. Um. That part is the experts yang tadi, they could not uh, attend because they have other commitments, right? So, um, I'll pass that, that concern to them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.